1976, biologist Richard Dawkins published the book The Selfish Gene. In it, he explores the role that genes play in evolution. Since then, it sold over 1 million copies, but unfortunately has been used to justify some selfish behavior. But are genes really selfish? Yes and no. Genes, as you might recall, are chunks of DNA that encode for proteins. Proteins are the basic building blocks of life. Proteins acting in concert manifest as traits, and traits can be anything from eye color to a certain behavior. If a trait helps an organism survive and produce offspring, the gene for that trait gets passed on. If it doesn't, the trait and its corresponding genes fall by the evolutionary wayside. So in the everyday sense of the term, genes aren't selfish. They're just molecules of DNA. They have no agenda of their own. Still, armed with this knowledge, you might conclude that genes making an organism more greedy and aggressive would have an advantage. And to some degree, that's correct. But it's also overly simplistic. We know that humans and animals do nice things for each other, even when it appears to hurt their own success. There are at least two compelling explanations for why these acts of altruism survived. Sometimes, behaviors seem altruistic, but they're actually short-term loans. For example, the vampire bat will die if it doesn't eat blood for more than two days. It lives in large groups, and if one bat goes hungry, another one will step up and regurgitate some of its meal. Kind of gross. But data shows that vampire bats keep score, and anybody not returning favors is eventually cut off. This behavior is called reciprocal altruism. How it evolved is still a bit of a mystery. After all, some bat had to be the first blood donor with no guarantee of being repaid. Then there's kin selection, which is basically doing something nice for a family member because you share some of the same genes. Bees, among other insects, provide the clearest example. Worker bees are all female, sterile, and due to a strange fact about honeybee mating, share 75% of the same genetic information. If they were to have their own offspring, they'd only share 50%. Therefore, it's in the interest of their genes not to have baby bees and help the queen produce more sisters. So as you can see, even though genes are in it for themselves, they have more tricks up their sleeve than just being selfish. For Scientific American's Instant Egghead, I'm Eric Olson.